and good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it on this first Sunday in the month of August in the year 2022. It's so good to see everybody this morning Amen. on this communion Sunday. Amen. 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 God saw us pass, saw us through the rain, the thunder, and the lightning. All right. And allow us to come into God's house to worship Him in spirit and in truth. I don't know about you, but I'm just excited to be here. Anytime I'm in the day and land of the living, I'm right. just so thrilled behind it because God overlooked last night so that you and I can get it right today. Amen. All right. So All right. with that said, let's look to the Lord in prayer and then we'll get into our order of worship or our call to worship. Eternal God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for this time together that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. So, Lord, I pray right now that you may bless this service. You may anoint this service. Touch each person here under the sound of my voice. Allow them, oh God, to feel your spirit. They get stirred up, oh God, so that, God, when we leave here, oh God, we will leave here better than we did when we came in. This prayer we ask through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and let me believe in my heart, say amen. 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 If you have your hymn book, if you have, uh, if you can return with me to Roman numeral 14, Roman numeral 14 for our call to worship. Roman numeral 14 in our church hymn book. If you got it, say, I got it. I got it. If you don't have it, say, give me a moment. <laughs> all right. Many of us may know this by heart, but I think that we all can do it in unison. And the word of the Lord says, I was glad what they said to me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet had to stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. Every morning, for the day of your Lord, since the God of our elsewhere, I would rather be the doorkeeper of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the weakness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And those be planted in the house of our God. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, oh, Lord, a new song for his son, marvelous thing. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. You may be seated right now. We will be blessed with song, blessed with song by our singing angel, Sister Jennifer. Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise for Sister Jennifer. Amen. Well, bless us by song. After that, we're going to have scripture by Sister Kimberly. Amen. 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 I'm going to try to attempt to sing this song. I need some help. Amen. Amen. Okay. My God is awesome. He can move. He's 
another. Lord, we're just asking you to bless the sick and the shut in. Yes, Lord. Lord, we're asking you to bless the bereavement family, Lord. Yes. Lord, we just give you all the honor and the praises. Yes, Lord. Lord, we can't thank you enough for being so good to us yes. that you protected us from seen and unseen danger. All right. Lord, we just ask to bless each family one by one. Yes, Lord. Lord, just bless the ones that don't have food on the table to eat. Mm -hmm. Bless the ones that in the hospital, Lord. We know that you is the true doctor. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just ask you, ask you to bless them. Ask them to become to know you, Lord, before they take their last breath, Lord, if it is your will. Lord, we just want to say thank you one more time and just continue to bless. Yes. Bless and, Lord, and help us yes. to bring someone closer to you. All right. Lord, we just say thank you one more time again. We just can't thank you enough. All right. Lord, these are many other blessings that we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Come on, give God a hand. You see the other. Come on, brother. Daddy. Good to give God a hand. Got the praise for brother. Amen. 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 Good morning, Fidelity. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Um, God is awesome. He truly is awesome. Our announcement for this morning we want to ask everyone to continue to um, keep the Wilson family um, in your prayers and his transition. Uh, Sister Betty Wilson, uh, the um, brother. Wilson children, uh, just keep the family um, in prayer. Keep each other, let us keep each other in prayer. Also, we want to thank you for your gifts, your talents, your love, your prayers, your offerings, your tithes uh, for the support of this ministry at uh, Fidelity AMB Church. We ask that you continue to pray for our pastor. Uh, continue uh, to pray for. Fidelity also. All right. Um, upcoming um, in the month of August, we have a um, quarterly conference that will be held on August the 18th. Preferably, um, as, the, as of now, will be held at 1913 Fidelity, 1913 Main Street Fidelity of the church. If anything changes, the pastor will notify us and let us know. Also, as that Everyone that is, has not been vaccinated because we have uh, different diseases floating around now to make sure that you are, are vaccinated. Um, make sure um, um, uh, because the AME churches offer vaccination at, at many of the churches um, at, at, as we presently speak. So um, ask that we um, think about others and ourselves uh, in, in, in this process. Also, uh, before the quarterly conference, we asked that if um, anyone have any ministry that they'd like to get started at Fidelity, ask that you contact our pastor, Pastor Sinclair, right. to let him know. We, um, we, we're needing someone for missionary, at least to, uh, when, when someone within the church family uh, is ill so that they can contact know to contact the pastor to let him know so that he can contact the family and pray for them. Also, we need someone to head up the birthday club for each month, birthday club, anniversary, uh, you know, get, every, get, every, get in everyone's um, um, birthday of uh, uh, which month to let, and then we recognize that individual, our uh, individuals, um, each month for that. That, that you keep these um, announcements um, in your heart and in your mind, along with any love that the pastor may have. Also, I want to, if, if it's okay, just one second, Pastor. I would like to say a word uh, in ref, uh, reference to uh, Brother Walter Wilson. Brother Walter Wilson was a dedicated member of this church for um, as long as I could remember. Uh, Brother Walter Wilson was a person that that wasn't a, he, he didn't talk a lot, um, but uh, he also didn't complain either. When you asked him to do something, he never mind participating. As far as I remember, as long as I was teaching Sunday school here, 
Brother Wilson had a one when he had good health. He was here every Sunday that he was able to be here. And 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 Brother Wilson is his way older than anyone here that, that are here. So we're going to ask you to continue to keep uh, Sister Betty and the children in, in prayer. Brother, uh, Brother Walter Wilson served faithfully um, on the steward board. He, he served uh, in, in anywhere, in any capacity in the church that he was able to serve with, without complaining. Without complaining. Hey, I, I remember talking to the one conversation probably uh, with um, Brother Wilson, and, and, uh, and at that time, Billy was sitting, sitting there too. I asked Brother Wilson, um, did, he, did he think he was saved? You know, it was a private conversation. Like I said, Brother Wilson said, I, I got this was, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, Brother Wilson said, I, I put all my trust. I put all my trust in the good Lord. That's the word that he used. I put all my trust in the good Lord. So, as I always say, none of us have a heaven or hell to put anyone in. But God has given each one of us a gift. Yeah. And the question is, what are you doing with the gift that God has given you? Yeah. We've been out of church for two years. Two years. And we don't want to come back within the church walls with the same attitude. The pastor preached about a renewing of the mind. This is what this is what's needed. People are instead of running to Jesus, people are running away from Jesus. So it's it's time for a renewal of our mind, a, new, a renewal of our talk. A renewal of our walk. Let us keep walking and talking for Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, definitely want to kind of reiterate that. Let's keep the walking family in prayer. I spoke to Sister Betty on Friday. I went to the funeral home to pay my respects. I was hoping to see Sister Betty, but she called me early that uh, Friday. And she mentioned that she was not going there. She was making plans to go to Alabama. And she was real clear. She said, Pastor, I was married to him for 58 years. I've known him for 60. And I do not want to have my last memory of him in the castle. Amen. So, so I can definitely respect that. So I want to thank those who were able to go up there. Also, I want to let you know, Fidelity, you were represented last Sunday after service. As you know, the enemy had the fifth Sunday convocation, which we did not attend. Um, Kim and I, we went to Fountain, Fountain, Fountain Temple enemy uh, with the Reverend Tony Brownlee, and we had we had a great time. We had, we had a great time, and, 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 and Brother Doug Jr., uh, one of the sisters in there told me, said, Pastor, you better come and preach because we like to rock. All right. We, we sing, and, and sister sung so much, she almost passed out. And I told her, I said, look, sister, I'm going to try my best to preach, but I ain't going to pass out like you did. <laughs> you know, but, but, we, but, we, had, but we, had, we had a great time, right. and, and they send their love, and of course, they, they said anything that uh, they can do to help us out in ministry, to let them know we made, we made some great, um, great connections. I said connections. We made some great friends there, right, Kim? Great friends there. Um, who will also be willing to help our fidelity uh, when we do ministry. Also, I want to put this in your spirit. I, I know Brother Douglas probably didn't know. Probably, I didn't hand it to him on make plans for August 27th, which is a Saturday. August 27th, which is a Saturday from 10 to 12, we will have a major conference called Thinking Big. We have some who's who speakers. We'll talk about how you get ahead in life professionally, spiritually. We have Dr. Vicki Hale, who is the Episcopal District uh, Supervisor for, for this for this West District. Because I know his wife, as you know, she's a professor at Clark Clark University. As well, she does many things. She's going to be one of our speakers. Also, our second speaker is Kathy Freeman, who is the Independent Future Executive. Am I right, Kim? Independent Future Executive at Mary Kay. We will have some heavy hitters. It's free from 10 to 12. Bring everybody in la di da So make sure 
August 12th was in the Saturday from 10 to 12. Come dressed up, dressed down, but we want to make sure that you get to meet some of the who's who in the ATL so that you can learn from them, network with them, because we always know that it's important that also to, to not just uh, learn, but you have to also have what? Who you know. All right. Okay, All right. okay let me say that again. It's not so much what you know, but it's who you know. So okay. if you're trying to make some good connections, you want to take your life, take your business, uh, take your purpose in life to a whole other level, why don't you come on and network and meet some powerful, powerful folks. So, so with that said, um, I don't think that there's anything else on the agenda. Um, once again, thank you so much for coming out. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, so good to see you. Neighbor, so, so good, good to see you. Find somebody, find somebody, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't shout for you. Just say, so <laughs> good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Amen. So right now, for any further ado, before we get to our work, we're blessed again by our singing angels. Uh, Sister Jennifer and Sister Teresa will come and bless us in song. After that, we'll get right into the word coming from Luke chapter 15. Coming from Amen. Luke chapter 15. So we want to come on and give God a hand. Top of the praise for our singing angels.
on, give God a hand, God. Hey, Now, Lord, I pray right now, God, during this preaching time, during this preaching experience, that, Lord, that, God, you may give me articulation of speech and clarity of mind, Lord God, to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's in the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and let everyone believe my heart say, amen. 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 As you know, as you know, we're, uh, we're coming from a series called uh, Mind Renewal for Godly Blessings. Mind right. Renewal. Uh, for godly blessings, and, and last week we had part one, which is the power of talking to yourself. And as you know, we talked about the sister who had the issue of love for 12 years, who made up her mind that I'm going to go against custom and tradition and press my way to the Savior. Right. Because she made up her mind that if I don't talk to myself and decide to push my way, I will continue to be in a negative and bad predicament, which lets all of us know that every now and again, we have to talk to ourselves, or, all right. or as David would say, we have to encourage our own self when friends won't do it, when, when family won't do it, when we can't get it off of Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, <laughs> we have to know how to do it for ourselves. All right. And when we make up our mind to understand the power of self-talk, Talk. We'll be in position to what God has for us. And yes. this week, my friends, for part two, I want to look at a very familiar uh, passage of scripture coming from Luke chapter 15. And I want to start at verse 11. Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11. And um, if you have your app, I want to look at the Eugene Patterson translation. There's a message translation from Eugene Patterson. The message translation of Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11, because I feel that this translation best illustrates and helps us to understand this text. And it says, Then he said, There was a certain man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all this money, there was a bad famine all throughout that country, and he had and he began to feel it. He signed on with a certain citizen there who assigned him to his field to, to slop the pigs. Mm -hmm. He was so hungry he could have eaten the corn uh, corn cob in the pig slop, <laughs> but no one would give him any. Right. That brought him to a census. He said, "All those farm hands work for my father, sit down to three meals a day, wow. and here I am starving to death. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son." Take me on as, your, as a hired hand. Mm. He got right up and went home to his father. May the Lord bless him to the reading of his holy word. For just a few moments of your thoughts and prayers, I'm going to put a tag in that text and preach the topic a shifting of your mindset. All right. A shifting, a of, shifting your mindset. of your mindset. Right. My beloved brothers and sisters, can we all be honest and say that all of us have made mistakes? in life. We've gone the wrong places. We've talked to the wrong people. Okay. We've made some regrets. All of us have made mistakes in life. All right. I don't care how often you come to church, how big your Bible is, how much scripture you know. Can we all be honest and say, you have made mistakes in life. You've made mistakes. All right. I've made mistakes. And if we're honest with ourselves, we will continue to make mistakes in life. In a real sense, making mistakes is a part of life, but not staying in the mistake is something totally different. Let me right. say that again. 
You can make a mistake in life, but the key is to not go back and repeat that mistake over and over again. Because if you keep repeating the same old mistakes in the real sense, you're not growing, you're simply stagnant. And if you're stagnant, that simply means you're not in position for God to use you, and you're not in a position to grow. Let me ask you a question again. Have you made any mistakes in life, mistakes that you look back over your life and scratch your head and say, you know what, if I knew then what I know now, maybe I'll be in a better position. All right. If I had just done this a different way, I wouldn't be where I am if the experience of what I'm experiencing right now. All of us have experienced mistakes. Now, you're not coming. Now, I understand, like, I need you to let me go back into my life back in the 1980s while I matriculate at Virginia State University. Our brother does it at Dynamic HBCU in right. Petersburg, Virginia. I was a sophomore, and I was taking a class off the administration of justice, and I was doing good. Here I am, I'm on the dean's list. I, I almost flunked out of high school, but I made up my mind to get my life right in college. But right. when I'm going through, I'm going through college, and when I'm going through college, I know I got it going on because it was an easy class. The professor was easy. So after midterm, I made the decision to stop going to class. I made the decision. I'm big and bad enough to do everything on my own because it was an easy class. Have you ever experienced that everything was easy and you stopped preparing? You started right. doing your own thing. So hey, here hey. I am. I'm doing my own thing rather than going to class. I'm hanging with people out on the campus, right. like we said, in the HBC, I'm hanging on the yard. I'm doing what I want to do whenever I feel like doing it. I'm not going to class. I'm simply wasting my time. But right. not only am I wasting my time, but I'm also wasting my family's money. Because right. can you imagine they're working hard, paying the bills, and here I am not going to class, not, right. not doing my thing. As a matter of fact, when right. my parents called me up, there was a Sinclair house every day. I said, Mom and Dad, everything is going fine. I'm getting straight A's. I'm doing what I got to do. But in the real sense, I was making a mistake. Why? Because I was busy hanging out on the hanging out on the yard rather than going to class. Because right. it was easy for me. I had gotten the A in midterms, and because I figured I got the A in midterms, I could skate my way through. And many of us are like that in life because something seems so easy that we all of a sudden take things for granted. Who am I talking to? All right. I'm I'm right. say, yeah, we're Make it play. Easy. I've taken things for granted, and because I've taken things for granted, I find myself in a predicament that I shouldn't be in. As we uh, look at our text, we find this brother who had it easy going on. He was staying with his dad, and he was he was in the king's house. He was in. As far as I, can you imagine right. in your sanctified imagination, Jesus has said there was a certain man that had two sons. Can, two. Uh, I know he was a proud father, like you right. are, brother. Dad. He had two sons. He was a proud father, had his sons working for him. And his son, one of the younger sons, got too hot behind the car, looked at his dad and said, Daddy, get Give me the share of my own inheritance. Hold on. We got to put a flag on the plate because you don't get an inheritance while your father is living. You get an inheritance right. when your father dies. But right. you see now. this stuff. He looks at his dad and says, Dad, I see that you got it going on. I see all the wealth. I see all the prosperity. I don't want to wait till you die. I want it right now. So this, I'm going to have you give me a portion that belongs to me because in the real this, that my inheritance is more important than working for you. I need to hold right. up right there for right. a second because many of us want to bless it and not go through the process. Listen, that, that. Many of us Listen. want what we want right now without <laughs> understanding that we have to deal with what God has called us That's to right. do. So the younger man told, told his daddy, Daddy, you're dead to me. Give me what belongs to me. And I like what the father did. The father didn't fuss or complain. Right. He said, no problem, cool being son. I'm going to divide him. I'm going to give you your portion. And we know what happened. The Bible says say, that say, as soon say. as the young man got his portion, he rolled out. He didn't stay long. He didn't bother talking to his dad. The text us is no water. He didn't even say thank you 
daddy for the gift. He didn't even say thank you for the inheritance. I know I was supposed hey. to get it. I'm not going to say thank you. I'm going to stay for a little while. And then I'm going to go far away right. to a distant country. Hey. That's hey. what happens when you don't have your mind right. You get what you don't deserve and you go to a far country. He made a mistake and he asked for his inheritance way before he was supposed to get it. He That's got right. his money and he went to a far country. And the Bible lets us know when he got to a far country, he started spending money. Can you imagine? Yes, he yes. got money in his pocket. Right. And right. because he got money in his pocket, he's not saving or investing. He's not right. saving up for another rainy day. But he said, I got some money in my pocket. Have you ever been like that? As soon as you get some money in your pocket, you don't put it into a bank account. You don't put it into a mutual fund. You yes. don't put it into no stock market. The first thing you're going to do is say, let me go and Run the bucket, bucket, and do some shopping at Little Small. Let me go to Stone Grill. Right, so let me go and spend my money because I got some money in my pocket. I'm not going to save it. I'm not going to invest it, but rather I'm going to spend it. I got some money to burn. Who am I talking to? All right. Say, say, you know what, Pastor? Yeah, I made some mistake. I've got some good money in my pocket before. And rather than save and invest, I let the money, I spent the money. And just like this young man, he spent his money on wild living. And the other yeah. translations here, product for living. And we know what happened. He spent his money. And when you have money in your pocket and you spend it, you know what happened. You got fame and you got friends. Yeah, we all know about that. When you got money to spend, everybody wants to hang around. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever noticed that? When you got money, you buying up for everybody. You take yeah. everybody shopping. You taking them to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You buying them gifts. You doing everything. Right. Ain't nobody trying to offer anything. Anything on the side because you the big ball of shot caller. Right. You All got right. money in your pocket ball because you don't know what you're thinking about because you're spending, spending, spending. You're like, look at me. I got money. I'm taking care of everybody. And when you take care of everybody, nobody's trying to chip in, but rather than using you and abusing you and exploiting you. And we right. know what happens. All right. money all of a sudden ran dry. And the Bible says when this money ran dry, there was a famine in the land. All of a sudden, hold on for a second. He can have no money and there's a famine in the land. Wait, right. Where are his friends? His friends are nowhere. He's broke, busted, and disgusted. All Nobody right. is giving him a job. No one yeah. there. Hey, brother, you did for me. I'm going to do it for you. But rather his friends scattered. And we got to be careful, my friends, that we don't spend all our money and time on clowns out there. Yeah. We got to be very careful on who we spend all of our money on. If they're not investing in us, then we ought to be asking ourselves, are we investing in them? I think I need to say right. something. You can't take yeah, everybody to work for lunch and dinner. If they're not about anything, you said we're going to just buy your own. Yeah. Right. Okay. So every now and again, every now and again, every now and again, we got to so this man, this man, this man, he's in a far country, and all of a sudden, because he's in a far country, he's now broke, he has nothing, no friends all around. And notice what the Bible says, he's by himself, and the man is so hungry because there's nowhere to go, there's all nothing right. to do. And he's a Jew, he's a Jew, so he's hungry, and his mind is all messed up, because remember, he treated his father like his father was dead. And All right. do for you. Anytime you disrespect your parents, it's going to come back on you. Right. Right. I'm talking to folks right there yeah. and, and online. Like, anytime you mistreat mama and daddy, it's going to come back to you. So we got to yeah. be real careful on oh, how we treat our family members. Right. If we treat them good, then we're going to get good in return. But if you yeah. treat them bad, then guess what? Bad is always going to happen to you. Yeah. So we find this young man. He, he's in a far country. <laughs> By himself, and all of a sudden he gets he gets hungry. He said, "He said I need a job because the clown I was hanging with, I spent my money on them, and yet they're not there for me. So I just what I'm going to do. I'm going to hire myself out to somebody to do what I'm not called to. I'm going to hire myself out to somebody to feed swine. Okay. Now wait a minute. He's a Jew working in the pig pen. Oh, all right. and that goes against who he is. That goes against everything because." As you know, Bible reads all automatically. You know that swine was a no no for Jews. That's right. And because it was a no no, he's sitting there. Can you see him? He's working in the pigs pit. He's slopping pigs, and all of a sudden the pigs are getting something to eat. And then he looked at his own stuff. He said, "Wait a minute, now. 
They're getting something to eat. I have nothing to eat. I can't even eat pig slop. All right, all right. Why? Well, because of the decisions I made in my life, I now got to eat pig slop. I don't even want pig slop. I'm hungry, and when you get hungry, all of a sudden, you start coming to yourself, and all of a sudden, I like where it falls right here. Kevin started having a flashback. He asked, he said, wait a minute, how many of my daddy's family, daddy's workers got three meals a day? I'm loving that right there. Right. Yeah, I was there with my daddy, but I always ate. I was there with my daddy, but my days with my Shit. daddy. Are not as bad as the days in the pen. Let me stop All right. right there. All right. We gotta be real careful. Take it oh, we hang it with because if we don't if we, if we take things for granted, we'll find ourselves in the pen. Right. Remember, it started with his mindset. So now he's saying, I gotta go back to my daddy, but he has a conversation with himself. So don't don't stop there. Don't miss that. He's shifting his mindset. He's All working right. in the pig pen. He's thinking a big ball of shot calls, but now he's having a mindset. He said, I'm right. coming to my senses, and I'm there, wait a minute now, I'm remembering how my life was with my daddy, don't miss that, I'm coming back to it, don't, don't miss that, he said, I remember my life with my dad, so this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to get up enough nerve, I'm going to say, you know what dad, I've sinned against you, and yeah. this happened, he said, I come back, and I'm no longer worthy to be your son. What he's having, he's having a mindset All shift. Right. He's right. shifting his mindset because he realized I don't need to be working in the pig pit. I need to be with my daddy. All right. All right. And I need to hang out there because many people today may not be working in a pig pit, but you are where you are, and you don't need to be where you are. It's because of your mindset. And that's why I'm here right. to let you know. If you change your mindset, they got to open up some doors for you. There you go. You look at your name Make and your name change. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. And, I'm at, and you're probably saying this, okay, preach that sounds nice, but how does this work? I'm going to give you three. We got here. The first thing, how you shift your mindset is what the text says to know is that you have to do a self assessment. I'm loving that. All right. You have to do a self assessment. You have to ask yourself, why am I where I am? Okay, this, let me say this. He said, I self In other words, I'm going to look at my environment and right. ask myself, do I deserve better than this? All right. In other words, the young man said, my mistake brought me to take care. My mistake got me all, had, had me thinking I was better than my dad. My yeah. mistake had me thinking I was all of that. And then I wind up, I'm not anything at all. But it's not hard, that's hard. That's hard for a young brother to understand because he was all that was when he was with the daddy. All but right. now, he's working in the pig pen. Yeah. Right. He's Let's just see. dead swine. Yeah. And he's asking him, where I am. So the first thing he has to do, mindset. Why am I where I am? All right. And that's All right. what I want to understand. He did a self-assessment. No, he didn't talk to anybody. He had a conversation with himself. He said, why am I here? Mm -hmm. And that may be the question we need to ask ourselves today. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. All right. Is it because of some of the mistakes I've made? Is it because of some of the stuff I've done? or didn't do. Perhaps it was doubt. Perhaps it was uncertainty. Perhaps it was fear. Perhaps it was having somebody whisper in your ear that should have been whispered in your ear. Okay, y'all not feeling that. All right, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. I know my young, young folks probably don't understand that, but, but there was a show called The Flintstones there. Yeah. I like The Flintstones. Make it play. It's an awesome show. Now, you remember The Flintstones? You had Fred, Barney, Wilma, and Betty. All and right. I'm loving the flesh though, but you do realize every time Fred had a major decision, he would always have a good angel and a bad angel. <laughs> Yeah. All right, all right. Good age will tell Fred, Fred, you know what you need to do. All but right. the bad angel was always saying, nah, Fred, it's all about you. It's all about this. Go do what's right. Do what's wrong. And, and right. you know what? Whenever Fred decided to do what's right, his life went right. But whenever he decided to listen to that bad angel, all of a sudden he found himself in a bad situation. But I like what happened right. is Fred came, always came out on top. Why? Because he learned a lesson and he did a self-assessment of his situation. Why? Why am I here? Why? Because you got to be careful who you're listening to. All right. All right. All right. All right. You listen to the wrong people. That's great. You go to the wrong place. But I don't know much you do a self-assessment in your mind shift, but now you got to do a self-examination. Listen. Listen. Self-examination. Self-examination. That means you got to look at yourself. 
You gotta look at them, and nobody likes to look at themselves because, because, because when they look at themselves and do a self examination, they right. see their flaws and they, they see the imperfections. You know what, uh, uh, Sister Brittany, you know, when I was pastoring back in Maryland, I told people to do a self examination of themselves, and I put a mirror right in front of the altar, and everybody came up and started looking at themselves. They said, You know, I got a nice suit on, I got a nice dress, my hat looks good, I, I'm sharp, I got my gold blinging and all that. But, but what they didn't know is that I knew most of them from way back then. And right. I knew most of their junk and some of their mess. And I said, do a self-examination. And they was like, Rev, I'm looking good. I said, that's nice you looking good. I said, but what about your inside? Right. You right. Right. working on the inside. And they all said, got mad at me. They said, well, wait a minute, brother. You didn't tell me to look at the inside. I said, what do you think self-examination means? To look at the inside. All right. All right. There you go. And that's what this young man did. He had to look at himself on the inside. And then he would say, you know what? I don't belong here. Why? Because my daddy, don't miss that. Listen. My daddy is in the palace. My daddy has something better for me. I'm the, All right. miss it. My daddy owns me. My daddy doesn't want me here. My daddy said, if you just work for me, I'll All give right. you not only your inheritance, but I'll give you so much more. But you got to do a self-examination and ask yourself the question, what's more important? Is it about riches or is it about your character? All right. All right. Come on. Ooh, that, 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 that may make a whole lot of this plan. Right, right. Nothing wrong with prosperity. I'm like, go ahead and get yours, but what about your character? All right. All right. That's it. That, 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 that bombs going out. When I see, when I see music guys, they cussing and fussing, calling everybody every name in the book. And that's what Dad said. I want to first of all thank God who's the head of my life. Wait, 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 Make it play. Make it play. Wait, wait a minute. Now, if we do a self examination, right. let's ask the question. Why are you busy degrading and demeaning your brothers and sisters in order to make money? And if you want to really uplift people, how about you change your lyrics to elevate? Right. Well, we got a problem though. Because if I change the lyrics, I can't make money. All right. And then sometimes you got to say, you know what? It's about your character. So yeah. because your character will open doors for you. Your character is what people right. will talk about. Now, you know what happens when you go to a funeral. I know I'm coming, Brother Doug. You know what I'm talking about. When you go to a funeral, people are going to see a couple of things. They will see your tombstone. They will see your name. And they will see two things. They will see the day you're born and the day you die. But you know what they're going to miss? They're going to miss that dash. Because we know that dash symbolizes right. that dash is the sum total of your life. Life. So I'm here to encourage all of you. What does your dash represent? If your dash doesn't mean anything, it's time to do a self-examination of your life. And if you don't like what you see, just change your mindset. All right, all right, all right. But then here's the second, here's the last thing. The last thing is, now ain't much you do a self-assessment. Now ain't much you do a, a, a self-examination. But you must do a self-proclamation. Huh? All, all right, right, right there. I'm showing off my, my theological education, Kim. The self-proclamation, he says, you know what? I'm going to repent of where I am and what I did. Mm -hmm. Ooh, right. that's, that's, the first, that's the thing about changing yeah. your mindset. You got to shift your thought pattern. You got to say, you know what? My bad. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's too simple. That's too simple. That, 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 that. I'm sorry. That's just too easy to say. My bad. You guys say, you know what? Father, I sin against you. All right. All right. Because, because when we say my bad, that cheapens the forgiveness. That cheapens the sin. But All you right. got to call it is what it is. I sin against you. And that's what the young man did. He said, Father, I sin against God and against you. And then he degrades himself and said, you know what? Right. I don't even really need to be your son. And you know what the story happens, right? The story said the father saw the son. He got so happy to come on. Let's go ahead and have a party. Well, you know what? I I know the problem. You know why, Jim? No one's really shouting you because, you know, I left you at Virginia State. <laughs> you probably said, wait a minute, what happened to you at the Virginia State with the administration of justice class that you scared through? I'm going to free you up and we're going to be out of here. The, what happened was, after came final time, and, and because it came to final time, I'm asking myself, wait a minute, I made some mistake. How am I going to pass this man's 
class. So I went to this man. I went to my professor. I came calling Dr. Trump pretty much with my tail between my legs. I said, I said Doc, I said, look, man, I missed some class. He said, right. yeah, Brother Sinclair, um, uh, we missed you. I, I was concerned about you. I heard you was hanging on the yard and, and you were spending so much time out there and not enough time in here. I said, Doc, I'm sorry. Sorry, I really got no excuse. But, um, I need to get the I need to get the information in order to pass this test. He said, "Well, this is why I need you. I need you to study these chapters here. Go back and study these chapters here. And by the way, your test is in two days." I'm like, "Oh no!" But 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 here's the news. He had grace and mercy on me because he could have easily flunked me. Because part of the requirement, I forgot to tell you, if you miss one third of the class, you automatically fail the class. Which I'm not going to fail you. I'm going to give you another chance. And that's my word for somebody right there. When you make up your mind and you come back and you confess to God, God, I know I messed up. God, I didn't do everything right. God, can you just simply forgive me? God, I'm going to repent of my sins. My God in heaven will say, you know what? I'll go ahead and forgive you. I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm going to give you another chance. I'm not going to throw you to the curb. I'm not going to flush your door. I'm not going to fill you because you're my child. And who am I talking to right now? That can say, you know what? When I make up my mind and I change my outlook and change, make up my mind to do what's right, my God will say, come on back home. And when you come on back home, it's time to throw a party. And when we throw a party, everybody in glory is going to say, look at my child. He was gone, but now he's found. Who am I talking to? That can say, you know what? When you change your mindset, You'll get a and guess what? And, and, and here's the last thing. This is not in my not in my, my note. The young man when he went back home, guess what? You, you know you know the text right. He got a party thrown to him. All right. He got gifts. Nowhere in the parable did he have those things before. All right. But the father said, you know what, son? Because I love you so much and you changed your mindset. I'm gonna give you more than what you really had. <laughs> I'm going to do for you what you didn't have in the beginning. Yes, you were my child, but yes, now I'm going to give you a ring, and now I'm going to give you a party because you're my child. Because now you, I understand that you changed your mindset, and when you change your mindset, you'll be better right now than you were back then. And because you'll be better now than you were back then, I can give you more blessings. I'm done. That's my word for somebody right now. When you change your mindset, you'll get better right now than what you had back then. What you thought back then was up. If you change your mindset, what God has for you will blow your mind. For the Bible, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has been revealed in the heart of man. All that the Lord has for those that love him. When you shift your mindset, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal Christ Lord, we thank you right now. We, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your anointing. God, we thank you, God, for the, for the shifting of the mind. So, Lord, I'm praying right now for someone here who, or someone online who may have a mindset that has gone off course and off track. Lord, I pray right now that through your spirit, through your anointing, that you may touch them in a powerful way. That they may say, you know what, I'm going to shift my mind. I'm going to do a quick self-assessment, self-evaluation, and self-proclamation. So that I can get my life right. Because God, I know if I get my mind right, you'll open doors for me. If I get my mind right, I'll receive all that you have for me. So if there's one here today, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, won't you allow me to offer you the greatest invitation? But you have to change your mind. You have to change your mind. It's not about being popular. It's not about being this or that. It's about being in a right relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ. So who am I talking to right now that you can say, you know what? I'm going to get my life right. But it first starts in my mind. First starts in my mind. Or if you're looking for a church home, I know we have family members here. If you're looking for a church home, those who are online, if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you here at Fidelity. Just go ahead and comment, say, count me in, count me in, we'll get in contact with you. Or if there's somebody here and you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home, 
Father, tell us we will love you. Have you. We're not going to judge you. We, we're not going to criticize you. We're going to love you, love you, and love you. Because we believe in a God that says, you know what, all things are possible for those who trust in the Lord. So, so if you're looking for a church home, we'll you will be loved, you will be welcomed, you will be encouraged. All right. Why don't you come over here part of fidelity? We would love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. You know what? You're just looking for prayer. You're just looking for prayer. We would love to pray with you and pray for you. Because we know prayer changes things. Is there one? Is there one? As we look to God, we Lord, we thank you. We honor and bless you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, that we can have a shift and our mindset, oh God, because if we shift our mindset, we know, God, that we can experience all that you have for us. This prayer, we ask in the name of our Lord, David, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Right now, right now, right now, it's time for our tithes and offering. It's time Amen. for our tithes and offering as you prepare your tithes and offering. For those who are watching online, if you would like to give to this ministry of fidelity, you can do it one of several ways. One, you can mail it in the Fidelity and Me Church. 1913 Main Street, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia, zip code 30318. Or if you have the cash app, it's dollar sign Fidelity Amity Church. Cash app, dollar sign Fidelity Amity Church. We have Zale. Zale, email you at give to Fidelity Amity Church at gmail.com. Uh, for those who have Zale, email you at give to Fidelity Amity Church at gmail.com. Or if you want to get a little bit more, uh, you have to give the five. Give the five and search, uh, search fidelity and me. If you have give, give the five, search for fidelity and me. Amen. For those who would like to give, remember God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. God, I love that. Let me take it. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. If if you give begrudgingly. <laughs> Maybe God may give you a blessing grudgingly. <laughs> but if you give cheerfully, I know Kim said, I don't know, but I know Kim, you know, I, I ain't saying he's going, he's not going to him, you know. We, we, want, we want to treat God like, thank you, God. God, God's up for our source of everything. All right. And God loves to give. Can you imagine it before, before, before we go for Can you imagine how good God is? Can, can, can you imagine a parent loves to give their Children gifts. Who loves it? Hey, hey, parents, hey, parents, parents, hey, throw your hands in the air, parents. Throw your hands in the air, parents. Okay, we got one, two, three, four. Any other parents up in here? Five. Okay, why you put your hand down? Throw your hand up in the air. Wait, I just don't care. <laughs> All right. And you love giving gifts to your children, don't you? Yes, sir. Amen. So get them too. Remember, God loves a cheerful gift. Amen. Amen. Brother, brother, can you give me some prayer on that, please? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the gift that is to be used to your, to your will, to your Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 As we prepare our hearts and minds for those who are watching the online broadcast, uh, our online broadcast is coming to a close as we prepare our hearts and minds uh, for Holy Communion.